Book Two, The Gathering of the Chiefs. Up across windy wastes and up went Alfred over the shaws, shaken of the joy of the giants, the joy without a cause. In the slopes away to the western bays, where blows not ever a tree, he washed his soul in the west wind and his body in the sea. And he sent to rhyme his ale measures, and he sang aloud his laws because of the joy of the giants, the joy without a cause. For the king went gathering Wessex men as grain out of the chaff, the few that were alive to die, laughing as littered skulls that lie after lost battles turn to the sky, an everlasting laugh. The king went gathering Christian men as wheat out of the husk, Eldred the Franklin by the sea, and Mark the man from Italy, and Colan of the sacred tree from the old tribe on Usk. The rook croaked homeward heavily. The west was clear and warm. The smoke of evening food and ease rose like a blue tree in the trees when he came to Eldred's farm. But Eldred's farm was fallen awry like an old cripple's bones, and Eldred's tools were red with rust. And on his well was a green crust and purple thistles upward thrust between the kitchen stones. But smoke of some good feasting went upward evermore. And Eldred's doors stood wide apart for loitering foot or laboring cart. And Eldred's great and foolish heart stood open like his door. A mighty man was Eldred, a bulk for casks to fill. His face a dreaming furnace, his body a walking hill. In the old wars of Wessex his sword had sunk in deep. But all his friends, he sighed and said, were broken about Ethelred. And between the deep drink and the dead, he had fallen upon sleep. Come not to me, King Alfred, save always for the ale. Why should my harmless hinds be slain? Because the chiefs cry once again, as in all fights that we shall gain, and in all fights we fail. Your scalds still thunder and prophesy that crown that never comes. Friend, I will watch the certain things, swine and slow moons like silver rings and the ripening of the plums. And Alfred answered drinking and gravely without blame, nor bear I boast of scald or king. The thing I bear is a lesser thing, but comes in a better name, out of the mouth of the mother of God. More than the doors of doom, I call the muster of Wessex men, from grassy hamlet or ditch or den to break and be broken, God knows when. But I have seen for whom. Out of the mouth of the mother of God, like a little word come I. For I go gathering Christian men, from sunken paving and ford and fen, to die in a battle, God knows when, by God, but I know why. And this is the word of Mary, the word of the world's desire. No more of comfort shall ye get, save that the sky grows darker yet, and the sea rises higher. Then silence sank, and slowly arose the sea-land lord, like some vast beast for mystery. He filled the room and porch and sky, and from a cobwebbed nail on high unhooked his heavy sword. Up on the shrill sea-downs and up, Went Alfred all alone, turning but once ere the door was shut, shouting to Eldred o'er his butt that he'd bring all spears to the woodman's hut, hewn under Egbert's stone. And he turned his back, and broke the fern, and fought the moths of dusk, and went on his way for other friends, friends fallen of all the wide world's ends, from Rome that wrath and pardon sends, and the grey tribes on Usk. He saw gigantic tracks of death, and many a shape of doom, good steadings to grey ashes gone, and a monk's house white like a skeleton in the green crypt of the coombe. And in many a Roman villa earth and her ivies eat, saw coloured pavements sink and fade in flowers, and a windy colonnade like the spectre of a street. But the cold stars clustered among the cold pines, ere he was half on his pilgrimage over the western lines. And the white dawn widened ere he came to the last pine, where Mark... The man from Italy still made the Christian sign. The long farm lay on the large hillside, flat like a painted plan, and by the side the low white house where dwelt the Southland man, 
a bronzed man with a bird's bright eye and a strong bird's beak and brow. His skin was brown like buried gold, and if certain of his sires were told that they came in the shining ship of old with Caesar in the prow. His fruit trees stood like soldiers, drilled in a straight line. His strange, stiff olives did not fail, and all the kings of the earth drank ale, but he drank wine. Wide over wasted British plains stood never an arch or dome, only the trees to toss and reel, the tribes to bicker, the beasts to squeal, but the eyes in his head were strong like steel, and his soul remembered. And Alfred of the Lonely Spear lifted his lion's head and fronted with the Italian's eye, asking him of his whence and why. King Alfred stood and said, I am that oft-defeated king whose failure fills the land. Who fled before the Danes of old, who chaffered with the Danes with gold, who now upon the Wessex wold hardly has feet to stand. But out of the mouth of the Mother of God I have seen the truth like fire. This that the sky grows darker yet, and the sea rises higher. Long looked the Roman on the land, the trees as golden crowns blazed, drenched with dawn and dew impearled, while faintlier colored, freshlier curled, the clouds from underneath the world stood up over the downs. These vines be ropes that drag me hard, he said, I go not far. Where would you meet? For you must hold half Wiltershire, and the White Horse Wold, and the Thames Bank to Olsenfold, if Wessex goes to war. Guthrum sits strong on either bank, and you must press his lines inwards, and eastwards drive him down. I doubt that you will take the crown till you have taken London town. For me, I, I have the vines. If each man on the judgment day meet God on a plain alone, said Alfred, I will speak for you as for myself, and call it true that you, bright all, <laughs> that you brought all fighting folk you knew, lined under Egbert's stone. Though I be in the dust ere then, I know where you will be. And shouldering suddenly his spear, he faded like some elf in fear, where the tall pines ran up tier on tier, tree over toppling tree. He shouldered his spear at morning, and laughed to lay it on, but he leaned on his spear as on a staff with might, and little mood to laugh or ever he sighted chick or calf of Colman, of Caleron. For the man dwelt in a lost land of boulders and broken men, in a great gray cave far off to south, where a thick green forest stopped the mouth, giving darkness in his den. And the man was come like a shadow from the shadow of druid trees, where us with mighty murmurings past Caleron of the fallen kings goes out, to ghostly seas. Last of a race in ruin, he spoke the speech of the Gales. His kin were in holy Ireland, or up in the crags of Wales. But his soul stood with his mother's folk, that were of the rain-wrapped isle, where Patrick and Brown and Westerly looked out at last on a landless sea, and the sun's last smile. His harp was carved and cunning, as the Celtic craftsman makes, graven all over with twisting shapes like many headless snakes. His harp was carved and cunning, his sword prompt and sharp, and he was gay when he held the sword, and sad when he held the harp. For the great gales of Ireland are the men that God made mad, for all their wars are merry, and all their songs are sad. He kept the Roman order, he made the Christian sign, but his eyes grew often blind and bright, and the sea that rose in the rocks at night rose to his head like wine. He made the sign of the cross of God. He knew the Roman prayer, but there was unreason in his heart because of the gods that were. Even they that walked on the high cliffs, high as the clouds were then, gods of unbearable beauty that broke the hearts of men. And whether in seat or saddle, whether with frown or smile, whether at feast or fight was he, he heard the noise of a nameless sea on an undiscovered isle.
lifting the great green ivy, and the great spear lowering, one said, I am Alfred of Wessex, and I am a conquered king. And the man of the cave made answer, and his eyes were stars of scorn. And better kings were conquered, or ever your sires were born. What goddess was your mother? What fay your breed begot, that you should die with Uther, and Arthur, and Lancelot? But when you win, you brag and blow, and when you lose, you rail. Army of Eastling yokels, not strong enough to fail. I bring not boast or railing, spake Alfred, not in ire. I bring of Our Lady a lesson set, this, that the sky grows darker yet, and the sea rises higher. Then Colan of the sacred tree tossed his black mane on high, and cried as rigidly he rose, and if the sea and sky be foes, we will tame the sea and sky. Smiled Alfred, seek ye a fable, more dizzy and more dread than all your mad barbarian tales where the sky stands on its head. A tale where a man looks down at the sky that has long looked down on him. A tale where a man can swallow sea that might swallow the seraphim. Bring to the hut by Egbert Stone all bills and bows ye have. And Alfred strode off rapidly, and Colan of the Sacred Tree went slowly to his cave.